Hey, we're going to mix it up today with some shower thoughts. Not going to lie. The world is kind of funny when you step back and really think about it. In a day and age where everyone takes everything seriously, it's nice to pause and consider the intriguing and sometimes flat out just weird thoughts that some of us have, but for the most part never share. Some of them are pretty interesting, like the fact that the Earth's population has doubled in the past 50 years, but it took almost 2 million years to get to the 3.7 billion human population in 1971. For every person Almost alive today, alarming. there's about 15 dead people throughout all of human history. Or that one day, in the far future, someone will be the very last person to die of cancer. Others are honestly just annoying. You normally breathe and blink on autopilot, but now since I just mentioned it, you're doing both of them manually. Sorry, by the way. Or the fact that your tongue is probably touching the top of your mouth right now, but no matter where you put it, it just doesn't feel comfortable. Mm. <laughs> Why do women's pants have fake pockets, but babies' pants have real pockets? These are shower thoughts. Many women's pants also have real pockets. Whether you have these thoughts in the shower, or in the car while you're in traffic, or when you're laying in bed for hours at night when you just can't sleep, That's when I have them. the location doesn't matter. The Earth is revolving around the Sun, the Sun is revolving around the center of our galaxy, and our galaxy is in a unique orbit with the nearest galaxy to our own, Andromeda. So, with that being said, every single second, the Earth is moving into a new position in space that it has never been before, and will never return to again. Ever. Your age in years is how many times you've circled the Sun, but your age in months is how many times the Moon has circled you. If you could steal just a second of life from everyone on Earth, you'd be able to survive for nearly another 240 years. Wow. But, did you know that two people can be born at the same exact time, but because of time zones, have different birthdays, or even be born in different years. Yeah. Maybe there is no reason as to why we're here. Or at least, that's what we're supposed to think. I have a friend from Seoul who was explaining to me the concept of Korean age versus international age. And I actually don't know if this is a custom in both Koreas, but he's from South Korea. And he was saying that a baby's born at age one, and then every year on New Year's Day, a person has one year added to their Korean age. So theoretically, a baby born on New Year's Eve would be two the next day. Or at least that's the example he gave me. But I don't know why that one stood out to me. I just hadn't, hadn't heard something like that before. Maybe we're just characters in a universe-sized video game. Sleep could be a save point, which is why we really don't know what happens between the second we fall asleep and when we eventually regain consciousness some hours later. We also trust our bodies enough to just go unconscious and continue breathing so we don't die. If you think about it, it's actually healthy and recommended to sleep for 4 months a year. Four but in months. order to bring us back, alarm clocks are made for the sole purpose of being annoying enough to shake humans into consciousness. You might want to smash it and break it, but don't. Every analog clock that no longer works actually shows the time on it where it died. If you order a new clock to be delivered to you and it arrives safely, your time has arrived. Speaking of being conscious humans, there's a lot that goes on inside our bodies. Your brain makes your heart work, and your heart makes your brain work. It's really quiet given the things that are going on inside us right now. Like, imagine if you could hear blood gushing through your veins, or if every time we blinked, it made a noise. But wait, if everyone on the planet blinked at the same exact time, nobody would be able to tell that it just happened. There was an article that came out just a few weeks ago, a month ago at most, about this new chamber in Microsoft HQ that just became one of the quietest, if not the quietest, room in the world. There's negative sound pressure levels in there. And they were saying that people don't like being in there longer than a few minutes or at most an hour because it's so quiet that they become hyper-focused on the sound of their own heartbeat or some people said the blood going through their veins. I have no idea of what that could sound like or ringing in their ears. It just made me think of how the places that we believe to be quiet probably aren't all that quiet at all. And I'm someone who walks around with earbuds a lot because some sounds just really bother me or distract me. But I don't know, maybe some time in an anechoic chamber I could do it. Let me know if you try it. We have eyes to see, we have a nose to smell. We have ears to hear and hands to feel, and we have a mouth to taste. But is this every sense that there is? Could there be other senses that we just can't perceive because we don't have the means to? We just haven't evolved to need them because it's not needed on Earth. 
But what about on other planets? When we colonize Mars, will the far future humans evolve to have different senses than we do today? Evolution is an interesting idea. The voice inside your head has also evolved with you over time. Do you remember if it was the voice of a kid when you were younger? If you heard your 8 year old voice today, would you recognize it? Being able to record things digitally is something that we all overlook. We view old writing like the Wealth of Nations, or the Bible, or the Epic of Gilgamesh, and we see them as some of the most influential pieces of writing to ever exist. But in the year 3000, we'll be able to look back at thousand year old videos and recordings just like we view old writing today. If you're watching this by the way, hello. But due to deepfakes and people getting really, really good at editing and faking things, there's only going to be a very brief period in human history where videos can actually be trusted as evidence. People see glasses as a sign of intelligence for some reason, even though we all fail to test in order to get them. But you know, Antarctica is probably the smartest and most educated continent on Earth, considering it's populated almost exclusively by scientists. Science has taught us a lot about the universe, about the planet we live on, and even what goes on inside our bodies. One of the most interesting things that we figured out, though, is that the brain is the only organ that knows it's actually an organ. And on top of that, it actually named itself. But the brain takes time to process information. It's very, very quick. But not instantaneous. So technically, your body is living ever so slightly in the future. We live in a society, and we set up and made rules that everyone should follow in order to keep things going smoothly. But some of them are just kind of funny. For example, parking tickets are just speeding tickets for going 0 miles per hour where it isn't allowed. We have cars that can go upwards of 200 miles an hour, but there's almost nowhere where you're legally allowed to go that fast in them. In life, people always tell you to stay in school and don't do drugs. But when you get sick, the best advice you get is to be told to do drugs and stay out of school. You never truly appreciate the fact that you can breathe through your nose until you're sick and suddenly lose half the ability to keep yourself alive. Everyone That's has taken worst. medicine and seen a warning label to not operate heavy machinery while on the use of it. Now, they're probably talking about cars and such, but almost everyone immediately thinks of like a forklift, or a crane, or a Caterpillar 797F. Speaking of cranes though, have you ever actually seen a crane being built? They kinda just show up out of nowhere and then disappear randomly. Actually, no. Language is just weird. I made a whole video about it a couple mm. weeks ago. Try to think of another English word that ends in MT other than dreamt. I more closely represent the letter X as a math variable as opposed to it being a real letter. <sighs> it's just a fake Z anyway. Crane is the 9618th most used Shit. word in the English language. But you really don't need to know that many words to speak English well. Learning the top 100 words in most languages will usually contain at least 50% of the words you use in everyday conversation. Bring this up to 500 words, and you'll get to around 80%. I had a Portuguese teacher who swore by this. He would say that if you learn 800 words in a language, you can participate in 75% of day-to-day -day conversation. But that was really limited to describing a noun, maybe small talk with your neighbor, ordering food, going to the supermarket. And then he said you would need 10 times that to do something complex in a language, like read an adult novel, or what else is hard? <laughs> Write a research paper. But then half of that number to watch television and have a good time, although you won't understand everything that they say. I'm gonna have to find what study he got that off of, because I know it was one, but that was a few years ago. Okay, this video is three years old. I'm gonna look for it. And I'm still thinking of words that end in MT that aren't dreamt or have anything to do with dreaming because I thought of daydreamt. DMT is not a word. I'll keep this should allow you to go out in public and order food without an issue. Oh, okay. But when you're at a restaurant and you're waiting for a waiter, you become the waiter. On the topic of food, food also doesn't really go bad, just something else starts eating it before you do. Bacteria. Also, I was in a public restroom the other day and it had one of those touch-free soap dispensers. I don't really get the point of those though because as long as the soap does its job, like to remove the bacteria from my hands, does it really matter if I touch the dispenser or not? But one of the nastiest things there is out there is what you might be watching this video on right now. A phone. Most people check their phones nearly a hundred times a day, and I don't remember the last time that I thoroughly washed off my phone. 
There's so many things that you can do on a phone. There's almost unlimited yeah. possibilities. <laughs> cell phone providers take advantage of yeah. this and sell unlimited minutes, unlimited texts, and unlimited data for any given month. But in reality, you're actually only getting 44,600 minutes a month at most. So they're kind of lying, but not really. Marketing. There's about 730 hours in a month. If you work a full-time job, you're going to be working at least 40 hours a week, or 160 hours a month. It's all worth it though, whenever that check comes in. But sometimes, you spend money you don't have. In a way, debit cards pay for things with the past hours of your life, and credit cards pay for things with the future hours of your life. <laughs> that but was a good one. If you don't pay your taxes, <laughs> you'll get thrown in jail. Okay. But jails are typically funded with taxpayer money. So if you go to jail for tax evasion, you're living off of taxes because you didn't pay taxes. Taxes are like a subscription fee to your country that you can't cancel, even if you don't like the service. The only reason we want or feel the need to make money is to get rid of all of it in the end. For a very brief second, every 19 year old is the oldest teenager in the world. In the same way, every single person alive was, at one point, the youngest person in the entire world. But even more interesting than both of these is the fact that, for the smallest period of time, you were exactly pi years old. Walking is just you continuously screwing up your balance so you fall into your other leg, and the process repeats until you reach your destination. Knocking on someone's door is basically punching their house until they give you attention. Similarly, clapping is just giving yourself a high five for someone else's hard work. Clapping is universally a pretty good thing. It's a way to show your appreciation for something, without someone having to see you face to face. Facial expressions are something that we kind of just don't notice day to day, but they're pretty interesting. Your skull doesn't change shape at all. Your skin, your flesh, just warps and bends in ways to form a smile, or a frown, or anything else. Actually, you've never even truly seen your own face before. You've only viewed it in pictures or in reflections. The rich used to pay the poor for their entertainment, but today, the poor pay the rich for entertainment. Now, you don't always pay, like, YouTube is a thing, but YouTube itself is older than some people watching this video. Watching videos, though, is just being entertained by super tiny pixels changing colors and turning on and off. So and to be honest, existence is just... really weird. There are only two days in your entire lifetime that aren't 24 hours long. The day you're born, and the day you die. So, hurry those showers up. You're using all my hot water. Okay, this was another subscriber request from the Aperture channel. You'll find them linked in the bio, as always. I really like this guy's voice. It sounds like honey. I did find some of the shower thoughts more interesting and thought-provoking than others, but I think that it's fun in general. Thank you for sending it in. And... I'll try to think of a shower thought I didn't share before. Let me know if you have any shower thoughts in your head. I know last time I said, I sometimes wonder how often or how many people have pictures of us on display in their house. And I don't mean because you photobombed the picture, more that you just happen to be in a background while a family is taking a portrait or some type of family picture in front of a monument and then they print that picture and put it up on their wall in their family room, and you're just there forever. What's another one, though? Oh, I have another one, but it comes with a story. A few years back, this girl sent me a picture. I opened it. I thought it was me, and I put, the, I put it down. I didn't really think much of it. But then I went back to the picture and thought about how I don't have the clothes that the girl was wearing in the picture, and I don't remember taking that. So I was trying to remember when I could have taken it and realized that that just wasn't me. That was my doppelganger, but she looked so much like me that at first glance, I believed that it was me to the point where it really freaked me out. And then it led me down this rabbit hole of thoughts of, okay, well now there's 8 billion people in the world. So how many variations of facial features really are there? And if there is a finite number, how many doppelgangers do we have? And what are the odds that you see your doppelganger? Because if this girl never sent me that picture, I probably wouldn't have come across it myself. Sometimes when I can't sleep at night, I still think about that one. She looks so much like me. Anyway, yeah, leave yours. <laughs> 
And I have some channel updates, actually just one. I was going through the list of videos suggested from you guys and I realized that there's going to be no way that I get through them all at this rate. So I'm going to try to upload more often and if you've sent me a video or if you've sent me a message for a video, just know that it's on the list and I will get to your message. And thinking about that, I don't have a literary recommendation for you. I'm going to try to find you that study uh, from the linguists about the 800 words. And then I'll also add, what else did we talk about? Oh, an article on the anechoic chamber at Microsoft. I'll just tell you what I'm reading now. <laughs> so um, I finished a book on Kim Jong-il and I wanted something light. So I went for Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle because that's just my go-to a detective novel. I'm a sucker for a good detective novel. If it's not Arthur Conan Doyle or Sherlock Holmes, I like Agatha Christie's Poirot. Actually, if you've read those, let me know which one you like better, Sherlock Holmes or Detective Poirot. Sometimes I wonder who's better. Just things I think about at night. <laughs> All right. Well, leave any literary recommendations for each other that you want to suggest and leave your thoughts on any of this. Thanks for watching with me.